This is the story of a river which begins life on the frozen expanse of the Tibetan plateau. Considered the fourth most important river in Asia, its source was however discovered just six years ago by the French writer and explorer Michel Becel. As it flows through China, it is known as the Turbulent River. It then enters Laos, where it's called the Mother of Waters, while for the Cambodians, it is simply the Great Water. Finally, in Vietnam, at the point where it flows into the South China Sea, it becomes the Nine Dragons. This is the story of the Mekong River as it crosses the countries of Southeast Asia, a region full of legends and forgotten cities, lost empires whose remains have survived to the present day, and tribes hidden in the depths of the jungle. But it is also a land scarred by the horrors of human savagery. Dawn is rising in the mountains of Annam, and like every morning, Busneng starts the day with the opium ceremony. There is a traditional rule which allows men to smoke opium once they reach the age of 40 and have had children. Bunseng is 43 years old and is married to Bo Jam, who is only 29, though a hard life has made her look much older. Together they have had five children, with another now on the way. They live in a modest shack made from bamboo, and unlike the majority of the tribes of Southeast Asia, their house is not raised up above the ground. There are two entrance doors, one for men and the other for women, but this division is only used for the wedding ceremonies. Inside there is just one room. This is where everyone sleeps, as well as being the kitchen and the place where they store rice. There are no windows, and around the walls they hang baskets, tools for working the land, medicinal plants, food, and kitchen utensils. Bunseng and his family live in Salebe, a small village in the north of Laos, very close to the border with China. They belong to the Eko tribe, one of the 30 ethnic minorities which originated on the high steppes of Tibet and Mongolia and now live in these lands at an altitude of 1,300 meters. Their fear of the lowlands comes from a Hmong proverb which says, if you don't fear hunger, stay in the mountains, but if you don't fear death, then go to the plains. Activity in the village begins at sunrise, but by this time the married women have already been at work for hours, cleaning the house and preparing the fire and the food. Then they meet at the spring to collect water which they transport in bamboo canes. Twice a day, Bojam has to walk the three kilometers from the spring to the village, carrying on her back a weight of over 50 kilos. Meanwhile, both Chang Vang and Niai, the eldest daughters of Bojam, grind the rice. For the Iko, rice is not only the basis of their economy and their diet, it is the center of their lives and, as such, occupies much of their time. Agriculture is their main activity, though they also own buffaloes and farm animals, which are a valuable additional food source, especially at the end of the dry season, when rice is at its scarest. 
But today is not just any day in Salebe. Today is the 5th of February and the women are preparing the rice in order to celebrate the new year. Then they prepare special cakes and rice liqueur. They dye the rice red, green and yellow. Red represents raw meat, blood and the dragon. The green rice represents the crops, including rice itself, while the yellow represents all other foods. Every home prepares this three-coloured rice which will be offered to the family spirits. <laughs> 